Say, don't trip, it's December. <laughs> Who are you saying that to? Uh, tell them, don't trip, it's December. Okay? <laughs> you, still, you, you must still be a Christian even after December. And even during December. You must be born again even now. Is that the doctor? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. She gave me the book and I read it. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Muligo. She grew up here. She is doing so much. Um, and uh, we are proud of you, Sissy. A very young age with a PhD in what? what? In what? Development? Fi oh, Mamela, development finance. Okay, yeah. This is our theater. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And all of my co that are back, uh, you're welcome. So we... we it's, it's, not, it's not a sermon, but it's a very frank talk. Don't trip, guys, please. Please don't do that. Don't betray. Just watch this clip, please. Just stop it right there. Do you know how many believers are on that trap? <laughs> Do you know how many are walking that close? The events, the functions, what you consider to be good times with friends that are not saved, that's how you are living, if you are not careful. I was taking my morning walks last week sometime, I can't remember which day, and I was actually praying for this, that, Lord, can you preserve us, that we don't fall into a trap like that. And I just heard, or I can't remember whether I heard or whatever, but it was like this mess, this huge writing alert that I, it's like the Holy Spirit said, watch out. Be on the guard. Be alert. Um, you see those poor birds, they are not intending to be caught on the trap or in that trap, sorry. But the danger is how close they are to the trap. And do you know how many believers walk that close to danger? Uh, and, and every one of them tells themselves, it won't happen to me. Um, somebody said, the longer you play on the river banks, dipping your feet in the water and say, I won't, I, won't, I won't fall into the river, you are not aware that you are, you are wetting the ground on which you are standing. You're going to slip and fall. So if anything, may we be alert that we don't lose our status of 
being righteous in Christ and holy in him, whether it's in thought or deed. May we all be alert. So <laughs> if you don't trust yourself yet, don't go to dangerous areas by yourself. Call other believers along. If there are Megiddis at home, invite us, we will watch you. <laughs> South Chigeles and now, wherever you go, we are following you at your home because we are there as brothers and sisters keepers. Because we have to maintain this. The devil doesn't play games. Over the years that we've been pastoring, I don't know how many would fall into those traps at this time of the year. Come back around May, March, April, their lives are, are messed up. Coming back with sicknesses and diseases, coming back with this and that. Please don't go even that close. If you know your weak areas, stay away from them. If the beach is a weak area for you, go visit your mother, your cousin, Emma Tlia. Don't go to the beach. You are protecting yourself. Is that fair? Oh, you're not convinced. Is that fair? Stay away from this because the devil is not playing games. Um, I've made a few points and then I will try to go through them fast. The reason for this season is, not to rem is, rather, is to remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. I'll say it again. The reason for this season is to remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. Unfortunately, we've added so much to it, which is not necessary. Listen to this. The different kinds of sacrifices, everybody say sacrifices, that are made in this season, they are clouding the reason for the season. People will set this time aside to go and do all these funny things. Um, because it's December. And the devil is behind it because he, he, he wants us to forget the reason for the season. So he will bring all these sacrifices and everything else that is demonic in our lives just to distort God's intention for us. So as Christians, let us be alert and not involve ourselves in ungodly practices including those that are happening in your family. Ah, I knew in this one, I'm going to get a very cold shoulder. You have already met as families, had meetings, and agreed that, okay, December we're going to do and do and do. And it, where is God in that? Who are you doing that unto? I'm going to show you scriptures that are warning us against it because the Bible is very clear on this. Allow me to read with you the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 um, in the Good News Translation. I'll try to go through it very fast because this is where I want to focus my, my, my sermon this morning. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and we're going to have that on the screen, and you're going to follow me as I read. Verse 1, Paul says, I want you to remember, my friends, what happened to our ancestors who followed Moses. He's talking to the Jewish people here. They were all under the protection of the cloud and all passed safely through the Red Sea. We can draw a lot from that. We went to our own Red Sea in different ways. In the cloud and in the sea, they were all baptized as followers of Moses. All ate the same spiritual bread and drank the same spiritual drink. They drank from the spiritual rock that went with them, and that rock was Christ himself. But even God was not pleased with most of them, and so their dead bodies were scattered over the desert. Now all of this, read verse 6 with me, please. Now... All of this is an example for us to warn us not to desire evil things as they did, verse 7, 
nor to worship idols as some of them did. As the scripture says, the people sat down to a feast which turned into an orgy of drinking and sex. I, you don't need to be told more than that. This is what Satan has dropped into this season. Okay? Let me continue reading by myself. Verse 8. We must not be guilty of sexual immorality, as some of them were. And in one day, 23,000 of them fell dead. We must not put the Lord to the test, as some of them did, and they were killed by the snakes. We must not complain, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by the angel of death. All these things happened to them as examples for others, and they were written down as a warning for us. For we live at a time when the end is about to come. If you think you are standing firm, you had better be careful that you do not fall. Every test that you have experienced is the kind that normally comes to people. But God keeps his promise, and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. At the time you are put to the test, he will give you the strength to endure it, and so provide you with a way out. So then, my dear friends, keep away from the worship of idols. I speak to you as sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup we use in the Lord's Supper, and for which we give thanks to God, when we drink from it, we are sharing in the blood of Christ. And the bread we break when we eat it, we are sharing in the body of Christ. Because there is, there is the one loaf of bread, all of us, though many, are one body, for we all share the same loaf. Verse 18, consider the people of Israel, those who eat what is offered in sacrifice, share in the altar service to God. Do I imply then that an idol of food offered to it really amounts to anything? No. What I'm saying is that what is sacrificed on pagan altars is offered to, not to God. I do not want you to be partners with, you cannot drink from the Lord's cup and also the, from the cup of, you cannot eat at the Lord's table and also at the table of, oh, do we want to make the Lord jealous? Do we think we are stronger than he? We are allowed to do anything, so they say. That is true, but not everything is good. We are allowed to do anything, but not everything is helpful. None of you should be looking out for your own interests, but for the interests of others. You are free to eat anything sold in the meat market without asking any questions because of your conscience. For as the scripture says, the earth and everything in it belong to the Lord. Now, if an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you decide to go, eat what is said before you without asking questions because of your conscience. But if someone tells you this food was offered to idols, then do not eat that food for the sake of the one who told you, and for conscience' sake. That is, not your own conscience, but the other person's conscience. Well, then someone asks, why should my freedom to act be limited by another person's conscience? If I thank God for my food, why should anyone criticize me about food for which I give thanks? Well, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for God's glory. Live in such a way as to cause no one trouble, either to Jews or Gentiles or to the church of God. Just do as I do and try to please everyone in all that I do, not thinking of my own good, but of the good of all, so that they might be saved. Wow. Wow. 
Did you get that? Let's try and unpack that. I'll try to be quick, please. There are three warnings in that portion of Scripture that Paul is giving. I, I ask you to go and read it again by yourself. There are three warnings. The first one, he says, we must not be guilty of sexual immorality as some of them were, and in one day 23,000 of them fell dead. That is in verse 8. Can I repeat that warning to all of us sitting here now? As we, as we move into this time of just relaxing, may we not be guilty of sexual immorality. Can we all say that? May I not be guilty of sexual immorality. Now you will say, oh, but pastor, I'm, I'm past that stage. Really? Because the devil is past no stage. May we not be guilty of sexual immorality, okay? If they did, and in one day, 23,000 of them died from, from that one act, that God is still the God today. Now, <clears throat> it's not 23,000 only that died. You go to the book of Numbers and read the story. People will say the Bible is contradictory <laughs> because in the book of Numbers, when you go read that story, it will tell you that in total 24,000 died. But out of that 24,000, 23,000 died in one day. There's nothing contradictory there. They were dying as they were doing this. Five here, 20 that day, next week, 30. But until God had had enough, I'm using human terms now. And 23,000 of them fell down. So please, let us be very careful on this. Um, you will say, but pastor, I went through this and uh, I, I dealt with, be alert. Everybody say alert. alert. Say it again, alert. alert. Be alert. Because it's not necessarily that you go sleep with people, but you can in many other ways do the act. It's still called sexual immorality. The second warning I pick up on this portion of scripture is in verse 9 where he says, we must not put the Lord to the test as some of them did. And what happened? They were killed by the snakes. Don't tempt or test God. Please. Now, I read into that this. I can do this one thing today, and I think, oops, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and I do it again tomorrow, oops, I shouldn't have done that. And then I come up and I say, hey, listen, I've been doing it a few times and God hasn't killed me. So I can just continue doing it. You're testing God. Don't test him. Please. The third warning that I pick up from that is in verse 10. And this is what he says. We must not complain as some of them did. And what happened? And they were destroyed by the angel of death. Let's all read that verse again. We must not complain as some of them did. And they were destroyed by the angel of death. There are people who've got scale, a scale on which they weigh sin. They've got terrible sins and they've got light sins. On their scales, complaining is very light, and yet to God, it's just as equal as sexual immorality. Are you getting that? No, but pastor, I'm not as bad as that one. They, was, they are sleeping all over the place. I'm just complaining because God, now we are delay. <laughs> Don't complain. God doesn't take kindly to that. Out of the three million plus who left Egypt, this is what caused them not to enter the promised land, complaining. Amen? So let me recap again the three warnings. Let's all read verse 8 together. I read verse 8 on the screen. Let's read. We must not be guilty 
of sexual immorality as some of them were and in one day. Don't do that. Verse 9. We must not put the Lord to the test. Listen, this is not to scare you. It's a warning. Unless if you had already planned on going on this spree, then you will be uncomfortable with me. But it's a warning. So, <clears throat> what must we look out for in this season? If we say we don't want a trip, what is it that we must look out for? It's still in the same book, 1 Corinthians 10, but listen to this verse. I've picked it up on the Passion Translation, the two verses, verses 14 and 15. Let us read them together. He says, my cherished friends, keep on running away. My cherished friends, keep on running away. It's, your, it's, it's my responsibility and yours. You can't pray against this. You must run away from it. <laughs> now I will resist it in Jesus' name. I will resist La Kula Box on Friday in Jesus' name. Uh-uh. Run away. Buzu Meza, you still Okay. What's your story? Then Paul says it this way in verse 15. I know I'm writing to thoughtful people. So carefully consider what I say. He says, I trust you that you, you are a thoughtful person. We are was you're not going to come back with a pathetic story that, your pastor, I didn't know what happened. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit is so faithful to stop us from this nonsense every time. He's so faithful. He is so faithful. There are people on your phone that he keeps telling you to delete, and you don't. Because in your heart... You can see where this thing is going, and you like it. You like it. Those silly notes they send you, you know where these notes are leading to, and you like it. I'm talking to the married people here. You know what, where that thing is leading to. It makes you feel so good. Hmm. <laughs> if you read the scripture there, Paul says, if they invite you to their house and you choose to go, then you are responsible. You can't come and say, Pastor, when I got there, uh, I was packed in, and uh, yo, I didn't know how to leave. No, no, you're lying. You knew very well it's going to end up like this. As Bob and Duan, as Badal, I will not cut. You won't fool us. You won't fool God. No, will you fool yourself? Make it a habit to run away. Hallelujah. This December, do what? Not from believers, from sin. Paul says, I, am, I think I'm writing to thoughtful people here. People are going to apply their minds on this so that they don't fall, they don't trip in December. Let's talk about, I said, what are the things that we must look out for? Let's talk about the sacrifices made to other things. I even said there, slash gods, slash idols. Watch out for what? Let's read that statement. Sacrifices made to other things, gods, or idols. Now, 
the one who's bent on doing this this December is already asking me, Pastor, which are those? <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> because you already know. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not naive. He knows. He's already telling you, don't go there. Oh, but Pastor, what will my family think of you? But what will God think of you? More than your family. Ah, oh, Pastor, I've put my money in there. Why did you put your money in there? What must I do? Leave it there. You put it there. Leave it there. When I, what must you do? Run. Oh, but Pastor, you don't know my mother. I don't need to know your mother. <laughs> you also don't know my mother. Watch out for these sacrifices. You heard the young lady who was talking, what was her name again? Low interviewer. That at an early age, I don't know what age she was, when she was left with her uncles and all those togoloshes and everything. Don't, don't go drop your kids there and say, I'm not past, I'm going to disappear. Don't go drop your kids there. Who can take their kids to a lion's den? And say, yo, the lion is child, but my kids are fine there. Don't go drop your wife there, you coward. Because already you are working here in your mind, okay, Pastor, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drop my wife there. Just Don't do it. Can I repeat? Don't do it. I'll tell you the common thing, especially in the African culture. They will say to you, <laughs> we did it to you when you were still young. Why don't you want us to do it now to your kids? It's because they are my kids. I wish you can stand where I'm standing and see <laughs> what I see. People are going, oh, don't do it. Everybody say, don't do it. No, but pastor, there will be a pastor there. Hey! We're going to have a short prayer. And hey! Ah, but pastor, are you, no, I, if you grew up, if you grew up in my home, ha! This thing wants someone with a backbone of steel. But then there is a price to pay. You look at the price, you look at your salvation, you choose your salvation. And say, I'm going, to pray, I'm going to pay that price. All the nonsense they're going to say about me, all the lies and everything, I'm ready for that. As long as I don't lose this. Amen? Amen. But my husband, pastor, is not saved. Let me tell you something. Confront him. Tell him, listen, Baba, this thing coming doesn't agree with my faith. And I am not a child. I'm not going to participate in this. It's not because I don't love you. I do. <laughs> Give him that. It works. <laughs> Tames the man. Eat him. But I'm not going there. Please, you better understand me. I am not. How are you going to say it? Listen, Baba, I'm not going there. You know, I, I'm, oh, yeah, but anyway, uh, I like, we were, we, we've got about how many young guys that are small, about 78 or 87, I can't remember. That 78 that we have taken in in our initiation school uh, this past few days. Um, the one boy there shared a story which oh, it blesses me. He is saved in our church in East London, and the whole family they are not saved, including his father, who deserted him when this boy 
was still growing up. He was raised up by his mother. The mother passed away beginning of the year, this year. He agreed with the mother. The mother was in the church, born again. That ma, when I go for initiation, I'm going to rock, not these other funny things. The mother agreed and said, no, my child is a given. But now the mother is gone. Here comes this girl who deserted him for years. He shows up. He says, okay, you're going in there. This is how we do it here at home. The boy sits his father down. I like this. He says to his father, Dada, listen to me, please. I don't even know you. You were not there when I grew up. My mother raised me up. Me and my mother, we served Jesus. And we agreed, the two of us. I'm not going your way. I'm going our way, which is the God's way. Now, wait, wait. That's not the end of the story. Now, the father is, he doesn't know what to say about this. Well, how I pray that that father maybe is visiting here today. He doesn't know what to say, so he takes the boy to the grandfather. Because he says to the boy, your grandfather will never agree to this. He says, no, but it's my life. It's not my grandfather's life, it's my life. So they go to the grandfather in the village. The boy says to grandfather, I'm not doing it your way, granddad, because your way doesn't agree with my faith. And then the grandson said, no, if then you don't do it that way, the boy says, let me help you, dad, granddad. If I don't do it your way, leave it. As long as you take me through school, and even if you don't, I am a believer. God will provide. Whoa, it's not the story. Granddad says, no way. I'm telling you now, this is how we do things here. He says, but dad, with due respect, I don't know this man. I've never seen him. He only comes to my life now. Me and my mother, we agreed on this. Now my mom is with the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm still here. If you're not happy with what I say, with due respect, leave it. I will go through school. And when I'm done, <laughs> I'll do it my way. So they called. Oh yeah, you are here. They called him. Yeah, he's here. You told me the story. They called him. The family called Pastor Baleni, come, just come and explain this. And Baleni explained it. And the boy is here with us. He told them, it's my life. <laughs> now, when you are sitting there and you are like, yo, Pastor, you don't know my family. <laughs> hey. And there's the other guy as well. <laughs> Same thing happened. And he told them, no, leave it. He went through school, went to work, got a job. At a mature age, <laughs> he came in and he did it. In his own terms. You run from evil. You greedy you. Now if I don't do this, then I won't get Christmas presents. You weighing Christmas presents heavier than your salvation. Hmm. <laughs> I like your face. I like it. So look out for these scary things. Let's read. 1 Corinthians, okay, I still have 15 minutes here. Chapter 10 again in the Passion this time, 19 to 22. Listen to this. Uri, now, I'm saying that idols and the sacrifices offered to them, sorry, now, am I saying that idols and the sacrifices offered to them have any value? Absolutely not. And by the way, this doesn't only apply to the closer speaking. Every culture goes through this nonsense. You can, you can say it in English, but it's still demonic. Absolutely not. However, I'm implying that when an unbeliever offers a sacrifice to an idol, it is not offered to the true God, but to a... To a... Let me read that again. However, I'm, I'm implying that when an unbeliever, what is an unbeliever? Is somebody who doesn't confess Jesus as their savior. And they don't live their lives as followers of Jesus. Because there are many who say Jesus is my savior, but are not living as followers of Jesus. Then you are an unbeliever. Yeah. 
Hey, I'm going to give you attention. I'm going to give you attention. Just relax. You're going to explode. Relax. It is Andre. It is it. Please. Relax. You're going to explode. We don't want to pick pieces up what January year of people who just went on a spree. We're not going to offer anything to a demon. No, but pastor, we're doing this for my great-grandfather. So, you mean my great-grandfather is a demon? You said that I didn't. But I'll tell you something. He never asked you for it. Something else did. Not your grandfather. (laughs) But I saw him in a dream. Let me show you what the Bible says. The moment you enter that six foot, you cease to even think or remember anything you're waiting for the judgment day. Anything that pretends to be me. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. So, um, <laughs> if I would ever show up <laughs> to anybody and say, hey, it's me. Hey, 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 it's me. Pastor T, it's me. Say to that thing, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. He is not like you. He doesn't have a stinking breath. (laughs) Because the Bible tells us that when the devil is into his games, he can even make himself like an angel of light. That's what the Bible says. One of my brothers many years ago came to me and said, Dad, we just want, uh, Buti, we just want to do something for our great, great, great grandfathers. I said, where did you see them? Because we only know our father. We don't know his father. We have never seen his mother. So where have you seen the great, great, great? Where did you see them? He says, no, I was sleeping, and they, there they came from the crawl. I said, how did you know it's them? He says, no, they told me that is them. One was short with a long white beard. And they didn't know that is a Chinese. How did you? <laughs> Short guy with a very long white beard. He's a Chinese guy. And what's that mean? Long? How did you know that is him? No, they said so. I said, okay, now let's make it easy. I'm the firstborn. This is where I stay. You tell them. Uput, he says, go ask him. I'm still waiting. Because there's no demon who's going to come and tell me nonsense here. Yeah? But pastor, you are an African. You are so right. I am Christian. (laughs) So hey, listen, in your sphere of friends in the church, watch the one who's going to disappear for a weekend and not tell you where they've gone. If you know his home or her home, just rock up unannounced. Don't offer things to demons. I had a guy, he said he studied practical theology. He is a minister of the gospel. He was preaching, but so much unbiblical things, which are in some book written by some guy who tried to interpret what he thought the Bible is saying. And this guy says, it's people like you, Pastor Don, it's a big event who call our ancestors demons. It's people like you, and he's crying. He says, how can you call my, my father a demon? And I said, why are you crying? I'm saying it to myself because I don't respond to the preacher. But why are you crying? It's because you know he's not your father. He's a demon. But pastor, what if I dream about my dad? I dream about Omphil so many times. But is, am I taking instructions from him? No. I can't wake up in the morning and say, <clears throat> yeah, Sasa, <clears throat> last night I dreamed of dad. <clears throat> I even dream about my mother-in-law. Can you believe that? I do dream hearing her say, 
like the, no, no, not like, uh, but unetena. Uh, I don't walk around now telling everybody, yo, what does this mean? It means nothing. I knew her. I'm going to dream about her. Ah, can I ask how many of you here do not have ancestors? Can I see your hand? Don't do that because you are lying. What are ancestors? Are our parents who are departed. We all have them. Or else you are Melchizedek. <laughs> but if you were born of flesh and blood, you have them. The Bible even talks about ancestors. When David has served his generation according to God's purpose, the Bible there, it says, then he died and went to be buried with his ancestors. But between me and God, there is one mediator. That's what Paul says. Only one. The man, Christ Jesus. There is no other in between me and God. In other words, when I go to God, I don't go via my dead grandfather. I don't care how much he liked me. He is not the mediator. There is only one mediator. It's Christ Jesus. Well, I thought I was preaching a Christmas sermon. Hey, about Well, I don't know why. Let's, let's, let's continue. I don't know. If not, if the song. Okay. Verse 20. Absolutely not. However, I'm implying that when an unbeliever offers a sacrifice to an idol, it is not offered to the true God, but to a... Now, read the last sentence. Which part don't you understand there? Pastor, I think I need to come and see you. I don't want to see you. See the verse. You really offended me. I, you started off by asking me to forgive you, and I forgave you. And now you are, offen you are offended by the verse. Bless you. I felt it from here. That was very strong. Queen Bert, up. Yeah. <clears throat> the pepe. Right. <laughs> Listen to this. You can't drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You can't feast at the table of the Lord and feast at the table of demons. You don't want to arouse God's jealousy. Ah, so God will get jealous about this. He does. He is very jealous. He, nobody can share his glory. Nobody. You try to compete with other things, God walks away. Let me end with this, the lessons, three minutes. Lesson number one, let's read it out together. The two go together. They are going to be year-ending parties in your, oh yeah, the schools have already started. I'm late. <laughs> Other departments are going to do the same. Here are the lessons from this. Let's repeat that lesson. Number one, stay away from drinking and sexually. Once you are drunk, I promise you, the rest follows. You can't separate the two. No, but Pastor down does. I would say, you, I'm very strong. I'm the last man standing. I don't need to know you, you weak thing. 
you started already by drinking. But pastor, I think I'm going to be strong. If you think you're going to be strong, don't go. (laughs) See, Havana? Suguya. Here is a very easy and a very simple excuse. Say to them, I've got an appointment with Pastor Don and Pastor Nomsa. Will you say that? And then take us out to supper and you pay. (laughs) Hello, we are protecting you. (laughs) Why must we do everything now? Protect you, take you to supper, and we pay. Ah. (laughs) Lesson number two. Let's read it. Who is them? Demons. Who is them? De- no, say it out loud. Who is them? Demons. Stay away. Paul says if they tell you, no, hey, but uh, I'm going to try and interpret that in English if it will come out nice. I what must you do right there? Walk away. It's worse now that they've told you. Paul says, if they don't tell you and you don't know, I mean really don't know. Paul says with great with gratitude. In other words, you receive it as the same way you receive your food at home. But if I were you, anybody who is unbelieving, the moment they look suspicious and invite me for a meal, I don't go. Because somewhere, somehow, hmm, You will better this me to tell the net toothpicks about city which means about yeah we told you he was here. He was here. Yo, Pastor, are you taking this thing that serious? Three times more serious than you think. Because it is serious. Yo, but Pastor, hey, listen, that club and seventy eight. Hey, 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 the last lesson, and then we are gone. Let's read it together. Let's read that again. Now you say, but pastor, what is to disobey? You're going to go against the scripture. You're going to take the scripture and try put things in there that are not in the scripture so that you can do what you want to do. You are disobedient. And the whole chapter, go read it, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Read it in any translation, as long as it's a Holy Bible. Read it. You can't read anything different from what we are saying here. Because it's God. Amen? Daniel please. I can see your face. Because it doesn't move me. No, we must tell you the truth as it is. Sin kills. And sin is not always <laughs> what you think, but it's just mere disobedience. Amen. Did we learn anything today? <laughs> I know this is not going to be one of those popular messages. Yes, son, this again, you go forward daily. Yes, you pass, into a bay, teta, pa, yes, son. No, it's not one of those sana messages, but believers, be alert. Don't trip. 
Can you show me that clip again before we pray? Can you see how, how innocent they are? Hmm? That's what the devil will do. You see the one on the side is looking for danger everywhere else but not on the trap. That's what the devil does. No different. Hmm? What is it that she's picking up on that cardboard piece? It's what she likes. They can't put stuff that they don't eat there. The devil won't tempt you with what you don't like. He knows what you like. So that's what he's going to provide. Be warned. Or else you're going to end up in somebody's pot. Amen? Thanks, brother. Let's pray. <laughs> Can we just bow our heads, please? Lord, okay, stand up with me. This is a prayer of us now. Asking God to help us. Because Paul says, even you who think that you are standing make sure that you don't fall Lord this day we are approaching you as your children not out of fear no but a deep sense of love obviously it can't compare with your love for us but we are responding to you and we are almost like standing to report to you that as the devil is going to lay out these traps everywhere we will be alert and those that are obvious to us Holy Spirit help us to walk away from them help us Father to stay humble but to be honest to our faith Jesus. very honest to our faith that we will not sell our soul for a bowl of soup in the name of Jesus whilst in that mood of prayer I feel this in my heart someone says pastor I don't have the strength to do this can, I, can we minister to you? Just walk here to the front. Please, it's not a shame. Just come here. You are not weak, but you are honest. Maybe you've already started doing these things. There was an abam. Stay away from these things. Come, I want to minister to you. Come, come, come. You don't have to be shy of anything. There's nobody here who's a spectator. And We are all praying here. Just come here to the front where you say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Come, I want to pray for you. Come. You cannot be known as being two-faced. There is strength in and there is strength in the prayer of agreement. And I pray with you. Walk here to the front. Um, you say, even the area I come from, Pastor. <laughs> It's worse than you explained here, but I need the power. Come, I want to pray for you. I need God to be with me. I want to pray with you. I need God to walk with me. I need God to help me. I need God to give me a favor, even as I open my mouth to tell them. I want to pray with you. You are not going to be disrespectful, but you're going to be firm in your stand and say, he is on my side, and who can be against me? I want to pray with you. Come, please. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and you feel, wow, is this what this thing is all about? Yes, we do survive. Look at us. Sit up, but see a pillar. Who crash to? Who crash to? Who crash to? See a pillar. See it. How do you feel about pillar? See it. See a pillar. Who crash to? Who crash to? I want to pray with you. Maybe you are one of those parents who have opened this door to your family. Hey, listen, repent. Just come here to the front. I want to pray with you. You are the father. You are the mother. You are somebody in the family. 
uluvulile wena ngokwakho lixa kwavulela ifamily yakho yes those hands lay but is olvala man namhlanje just come here let's come and close that door come come as we do this song please that we will not surrender to the devil we will be alert and wide awake to his schemes we will not surrender to the devil we are shutting those doors now we are shutting every opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ we will not surrender to the devil So here are your people father they are responding to you in your word you said time will come when those who worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth it's not about our flesh it's about our spirit being we commit every heart here father the cries of this heart the concerns in this heart the fears in this heart the reality of what they are coming out of we are asking that lord jesus you will be gracious keep your hand upon them father strengthen them okay just want to ask you just follow lata uh, dumepa please all of you standing here in the front we want to minister to you can we have mature christian leaders you're going to pray with these kids this is not a joke please it's not a joke 